Hello, in this video we will learn how to enable real-time communication between web page and desktop application. There are several reasons where this could be required. So for example, you might want to automate some repetitive task which will be executed on a desktop application, either on the same server or on a remote server. You might want to collect some information from our desktop application and report it back to server, etc. There are multiple ways of doing that, but in this video we will learn how to do this via SignalR. SignalR is free and open source cross-platform library allowing the instant communication between server and a client. SignalR will automatically select the best protocol to enable communication, such as WebSockets, long polling, server send events or forever frame. In this tutorial we will demonstrate the technology by showing how to connect the web page to the server's application and generate some models by clicking the button on the web page. Please note that certain applications such as servers may have a limitation on a license used via local access network or internet. Please refer the end user license agreement for the specific application for more information. SignalR client will be developed with JavaScript and will be hosted in HTML web page. SignalR hub will be hosted in servers adding at the desktop. Web page client will be able to invoke the build command from the SignalR server to build servers model by clicking the button on a web page. Server will send the calculated value of the mass of the generated body back to the caller client via send result function. Server will also update all the clients with the total number of generated models via update status function. All the communication will be performed real time, so it is not required to refresh the page to see the updated results. Let's create new project in Visual Studio. This is going to be C Sharp class library, which is, will be our servers add-in. Let's rename main class to be named model builder add-in and add several NuGet packages. I'm going to be using Swex framework to create the SolidWorks add-in. So let me browse to swex.addin library and install it into my project. Now I'm going to initialize my add-in. Firstly, I would like to set the embed interrupt types flag to false. I need to inherit my main class from SW add-in X class. I need to mark the class as convisible and assign the GUI. Now I will add a few more libraries into my project. First one is going to be SignalR self-host to allow self-host of our SignalR hub. And second one is owen.course. Owen stands for Open Web Interface for .NET and Course stands for Cross Origin Resource Sharing. We will be using those technologies to host our SignalR hub. And we need to enable course because our web page and our server will be running on different ports. Now let's add new class which is going to be representing our SignalR hub. Let's call it model builder hub. We need to inherit that class from the hub class from SignalR framework. One of the variants of the hub class allows to specify the signature of our clients. We can do it by adding new interface to our project and providing the signatures of our methods which clients would support. For now we'll just leave it empty and we'll come back to that later. We now need to set this type as a generic argument of the hub class. I can assign the name of the hub by using hub name attribute, otherwise the default my hub name will be used. Now we need to start our signaler hub. And we can do it from within onConnect function, which will be called when addon is loaded. To start our hub, we can use the web app start method. This option allows us to specify the configuration, so we can create a startup class and pass it into the start generic argument. We need to specify the URL for our hub. The URL should be unique enough to not collide with any other applications running on your machine. So in my example, I'm going to use a local host via port 8080 and we'll call the endpoint model builder. Now I just declare the variable to my signaler hub and I'm going to assign that to the result of the start method. We also need to disconnect our hub by disposing the variable. We can do it from within the onDisconnect function which will be called when addon is loaded or servers is closed. Finally we need to map the signal R in our oven and we can do this within the startup configuration function. Let's finalize the configuration of our project. The first step I'm just going to specify the path to SolidWorks so I can attach the debugger to the SolidWorks and I can debug my add-in. I also need to set the register for com interrupts option in build tab and finally use auto register attribute from Swex framework to automatically register my SolidWorks add-in. 
Let's hit F5 and start the debugger. Solvers will be launched. And because my add-in is automatically loaded, I'm going to hit the breakpoint. When I continue, exception is thrown. So you can see that framework tells me that Microsoft.Avin of version 2.1.0 cannot be loaded. If I look at my references, I can note that I do have a Microsoft.Avin, but the version is 4.0. It means that one of the another libraries refers version 2.1. .NET Framework allows to redirect the assemblies using the binding redirect configuration, but it unfortunately only works for executables. So in my case, this is a SolidWorks add-in, so it is a DLL, and in order to that attribute to take place, it needs to be placed on the main executable, which is a SolidWorks, and it will not work if I add it to the DLL. And of course, it is not a good practice to alter the application config for our main application, which is SolidWorks, so we need to find the alternative way. So what we can do is we can replace this reference at runtime by using the assembly resolve event from application domain class. I need to handle that event somewhere at the beginning of my application. So the good place would be to do this from within the static constructor. I can simply find the name of my assembly requested and also load that from current folder using the assembly load file. Now let's go ahead and add our client, which is a HTML web page. I'm just going to add new HTML file into my solution, call it webclient.html, just place some code. So it's basically just a simple single static page which has an input box, button and some status label. As a next step, I will add the build function to my signaler hub, which will be called from a web client. This function will take three parameters, width, length, and height. Now let's come back to our web client and connect to the hub and invoke the build command. So first I'm just going to import few scripts. So first to our jQuery and jQuery library for signal R, just simplify the syntax to use our signal R hub. And the last one is a script generated by our hub. You can see that we can access it from the same URL as our hub is hosted. And those contain the classes which we can use specifically for our hub. We can now play some JavaScript code to connect to our hub and invoke it function. So the first line you can see we're specifying the URL of our hub. So this is our base URL followed by signal R. We can also access the model builder class of our hub. And this model builder is exactly equal to the name we specified with hub name attribute. Now we can start the hub wait for that to load and subscribe to the click of the build button and then we can call the build method from our hub. Let's add the breakpoint to our build function and run SolidWorks. Yes, to continue loading the add-in. So now you can see that that hub is going to be created successfully. So from within the on assembly resolve, I can check which assembly is requested and I can deload the local version of that. I can also just open my client in the web browser. When I click build button, you can see that my breakpoint is hit and the value of the parameters are filled. SignalR also enables bidirectional communication. So let's just go to our client and add two functions, which are going to be called by our server and broadcast to the client. So first one is going to be called send result, which is going to pass the mass of our created model. Another one is update status, which is going to show how many models have been processed within the current session. SignalR can broadcast the message either to the caller client, to the specific client, or to all clients. So let's broadcast the status to all clients and the result to the caller only. We need to correspondingly handle the message on the client and update our user interface. When update status message is received, we're going to modify the value of the status label. And when the send result message is received, we're going to display the message box with the value of mass. Let's also capture the value of our input box, which is going to be equal to the size and pass it to the build method to the server. Now I'm going to start solvers and validate the results. I will open page in the browser. Enter some value into the input box and click on build. 
I can validate that parameters are specified correctly. I'm just going to broadcast that message to all clients. So you can see I received the message box and my status label is updated. Now I can implement the model builder functionality, which is going to utilize Alors API to build a model. So I'll start by adding new class to my project, call it model builder. And here's my code. I'm just going to import a few namespaces. Build method will create new part in Solar's document. We'll create a box with specified width, height, and length. Save the model into the specified folder with the current timestamp as the name and close the model. Let me create an instance of the model builder and store it as a class level variable on my add-in. I'll need to pass the folder where I'm going to store my built models. Now let me create a constructor of my model builder hub where I can pass the instance of model builder. Please note the signal hub is stateless, so you should not be saving any state variables within that class. Now I need to inject an instance of a model builder into the signal hub and I can use it by registering the dependency via global host. This dependency will be automatically resolved whenever my signaler hub is being accessed. Now I just call the build method from my signaler hub, pass the parameters, receive the result and broadcast the result to my clients. Let's now test functionality by starting SolidWorks. I'm just going to open my web page. So when client connects to hub, you can see that my constructor is called and model builder is passed. So I can utilize it now from within the build function. So let's specify some input parameter. Click on build. Now function is called. Now you can see that SolidWorks is actually generating the model. And I can broadcast the message to the client. So you can see the message box is displayed. And also our label is updated. So let me just remove all of the breakpoints and just demonstrate how it works. So when I click build again, now Solders generates another model, displays the result to me and also updates the label. Now let's take a look how that will behave when multiple clients are connected to the Solidworks. So I have opened three clients and three web pages and you can see I can instantly build the models and you can see that the result message displayed only to the caller, while the label is updated for all three clients instantly. So I can run more clients, I can schedule jobs, click build, and you can see that client receives a message notification. And the total amount of models built has been updated instantly. Please follow the link in the description of this video for more information and the source code. Thank you for your time.